What's going on, people? Welcome back to episode 40 of the Incompatibles podcast. Milestone, man. 4-0. I like when people just put a zero at the end of a number. It's apparently a milestone now, but anyway, I like that. We're here. We're here, man. What's up, man? Same, same. I was going to say the word. Different day. You know? Same old, same old, man. Same old, same old. That's all we need to say. Guys, before we begin, just want to say like, subscribe, YouTube, follow TikTok, Instagram, all that good stuff, man. But yeah, enough about that. We have a guest today. That was. Yeah. Don't away. worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, go on. Okay, so I'm Aaron. Uh, I'm an online Islamic fitness coach. So I've been doing that now for. Well, I've been qualified for about four or five years. Um, I've done a physio qualification as well kind of led me into the path of you know helping people improve their health and obviously recently starting to practice islam has kind of that's been my passion to kind of you know help people in terms of achieving their fitness goals but also you know becoming closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know that's kind of where it's brought me today so now i'm in the studio you guys gonna talk about it but yeah that's who i am welcome man welcome, welcome man Welcome. On a it's a good introduction. Ask you so a couple cool. of questions. Okay. Obviously, you say you said that you're practicing Islam and getting into the fitness industry. You know, PT. You've got some qualifications under your belt. You've got clients. You're doing well for yourself. So let's go back to before that. So, mm -hmm. obviously, in order for a change to happen, you want to change from something. Yeah, so yeah. Talk to us about the story how that's changed and what's led to it. Yeah, it's a bit of a complicated one, you know. I've been through all stages of whatever body type you think of, I've had all of it, you know. I've been fat, I've been skinny, I've been muscular, I've been shredded. So I've kind of done it all. So obviously when I first started, it was probably, I was playing semi-professional football. I was playing for Connors Key and I was kind of the only guy who went gym. Because I wasn't too... Everyone else was focused on, you know, oh, I want to play for the under-21s or I want to get a first team. But I just kind of wanted to play with my mates and go to the gym, play a bit of football on the, at the same time. But that's kind of where it started. And then the problem was halfway through the scholarship I was doing, lockdown hit. So obviously no gyms open. Didn't really have any motivation. Was just eating crap all the time, you know. And then just got really overweight and locked down, didn't really notice it. Obviously, you subconsciously know from looking at pictures and stuff, but it was kind of, when I went to uni, kind of fell into a trap again, was training, but was just eating, you know, pizza, burger, standard, you know, uni food. Obviously, my metabolism isn't the best, clearly. So that kind of allowed me to put on weight and I was, I must be about 100 kilos. And, you know, I'm only, yeah, I was a big boy, you know, <laughs> I was a big boy. Um, obviously, I'm only like 5'11", maybe pushing six foot slightly. Oh, which... you five, <laughs> if I were you, bro, I'm, I'm gassing it and I'm saying I'm six, six foot. Six <laughs> foot, I'm six foot. Um, but, yeah, then obviously kind of realised I've had, well, I did my PT qualification in lockdown, but I didn't really use it as much. Obviously, because lockdown, no gyms open, whatever. Went to uni, studied physio. Obviously, got into the rut of, you know, just eating loads. Getting to 100 kg. Then it got to about... It got to, like, Ramadan, it was, in my first year of uni. And I was just like, I'm just not happy with how I look, how I feel. I was very lazy, lying in bed all the time. You know, just got into a big rut. And then Ramadan came said, you know what, I'm going to start getting in shape. Start getting on my Dean. And I was just like, right, let's do it. I know what I'm doing. I may as well just, you know, do what I do for other people, for myself. So, lost loads of weight. I got down maybe to about, from 100, I got down to like 70 kilos maybe. That's impressive. But it wasn't... Although, what time period was that from 100 to 70? So, that it was, it was unhealthy, you know, it was about three, four months. Wow. That's so, bearing in mind, that's like 30 kilos lost in what? Three, three four months? 
That's 10 kg a month. That's crazy. But the problem I was doing, I was so unhappy with how I looked that I just stopped eating completely. So it might sound really good losing all that weight, but I didn't have any muscle mass at all. My lifts were going down in the gym. I was feeling really lethargic, really angry all the time, very short-tempered. And if you look at the pictures, I just looked like skin and bone. Like there was nothing of me at all. But obviously I thought I looked really good, you know. I was like, oh yeah, I've lost all this weight. <laughs> but looking back now, it's just, it, it wasn't very good. But after that, got into another rut, got, because I had slight eating problem. So I'd weigh everything. I'd weigh oil, chia seeds, crisps, tangerine segments, rice. And you know, if you're a bodybuilder, it's all well and good, you know, because, you know, they do that. But I wasn't trying to compete, you know, but that got me into a really bad habit. And then I started just eating whatever I wanted again, <laughs> put all the weight back on again, <laughs> got to like, I think I was 94, 95 and I was like, <laughs> you know, reverse card. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that's what happened with that. And then, um, obviously was doing physio at the same time then i was kind of the same thing happened same process where i was like oh i actually do, i'm actually quite fat i'm not actually healthy you know so i lost all the weight again well this time i did it right so i cut the calories down specifically not too much just increased my daily expenditure doing a bit of cardio here and there weight lifting progressively overloading and then obviously got into really good shape and then I shredded and then now I'm kind of trying to put on a bit of size before Ramadan again. So yeah. inshallah it go, all goes well. <laughs> now, touching up on the point of obviously you just discussed some struggles. We'll leave that yeah. to a side. We'll come back to that in a minute. Mm. Um, I want to ask you about your uni experience because right. speaking from my experience, <laughs> in uni, you ain't doing nothing, bro. Nah. Especially if you move out. Yeah, yeah. I swear to you, your diet's out the window. But bear in mind, I was in poverty most of it anyway, because I, I couldn't even afford to eat three meals. A day. <laughs> and then, like, your diet's all over the place. So, obviously, some people watching this may be in uni. Mm. So, what kind of, what was the main struggle that you faced in uni? You know what it was? It was, I wouldn't say peer pressure. But it was everyone else going out, partying. Yeah. After the party, they get food from takeaways. Or even if, you know, because you know what it's like in uni, uni houses and everything. Every, everyone's just sat there smoking or doing some type of drug. Yeah. You know what it's like, innit? Yeah. But that is just, obviously, I never did that. But being around that environment, it just creates comfortability in a very negative environment so you've got a lot of negative energy around you it creates comfortability and then obviously that comfortability just you know it breeds weakness so then you just give in if someone says oh let's go do this you're like yeah okay yeah. let's order this that is that was the main point where it was just it was the food the majority of the time no movement sleeping in bed all day yeah you know trying doing assignments but... do, do you know what is as well that stains you what yeah. everyone else is doing kind of stains your yeah, 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 yeah. And even when you know you shouldn't be doing it. Say, so like for a large part for myself now, I was going to the gym, but I was eating trash. And there were times where I just half ass it and I would go in, cut my workout from say eight exercises that I had planned or 10 exercises to four or three, go in there, get a quick pump and go back home and go eat hummus and bread. Cause that's all I ate. Oh, you and your hummus, man, bro. That's all I ate, and obviously at the time in Liverpool, I didn't really know like a. I can't go to Lidl and buy chicken, cause it's yeah. not halal in it. Mm. So yeah, they don't make it easy in this country, do they? <laughs> so I'd have to wait until I go home to eat something, or like get chicken from home to cook it in uni, mm. and that was one problem that I faced. That's talking good. about the uh, the peer pressure, it's a joke. Yeah, you cannot escape it, and you have to be very disciplined. But then again, it's like you're in that time period temporarily in uni. 
And if you're gonna take it serious, I mean, sure, but it's you're missing out on the whole experience, I guess, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just because thinking back to it now, I feel like a lot of people force this. Not for maybe they wear a, a type of mask yeah. when they're in uni because they want to fit in. Yeah. So I was doing a lot of the things that, if I look back now, I'm just. What on earth was I doing? Same. Hundred percent agree. I wasted so much time. I wasted what three years of my life. Once I say the degree to a certain extent helps me a bit because yeah, it gives me the knowledge of physiotherapy. You know, it's I'm not just some kind of normal coach yeah. who just says do four sets of this or whatever because I actually have some understanding of the body. But in terms of the experience outside of the study, I can't think. I genuinely can't think of one thing that I did that was productive towards life in general you know no i don't blame you same bro same genuinely like when i went away i didn't even come up with a degree bro i i <laughs> failed <laughs> you get me? so i genuinely wasted and the thing is years. you tried multiple times with that as well I know. and you still failed <laughs> literally i failed so i dropped out in my first year of uni and i got kicked out of uni the second time well, because I failed. Oh, boy. So, <laughs> the two years that I spent there, I didn't even come out with anything anyway. Yeah. So, all I did was get out of shape, ruin my life and come out with nothing. So Sick, that. Th that was, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that was the hit. But, it's, it's, it's that phase in your life in uni where, like, you're, you're not even there for the degree most of the time. Most no. people are there just, you know. It's the experience yeah. that the people are after. Mm. and this is a joke it's a joke but anyways one question before we get into the nitty gritty yeah what made you want to become a PT you know what it was it was one day right I was sitting I just became friends with my current flatmate and I moved in with him and we were sat in the sauna and he said to me, but, so what are you going to do next year when we finish uni? I said, oh, I'm probably going to get, uh, probably going to work in you know, Salford Royal or something, doing a physio job. And he was like, do you really want to do that? And I was like, well, nah, <laughs> <laughs> not really. Well, that's why I've done my degree to get a job. And yeah. he was like, just think about it for a second. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, so you've done a degree, so now you automatically think the next step is to get a nine to five or you know eight to four job, whatever the time is. And he said, you don't have to do that, you know. And I said, what do you mean? He said, why don't you got a PT qualification, you know? And I said, yeah. And he said, why don't you apply to be a PT, at, you know, JD, the gym we go to? And I was, I was thinking, yeah, but. You you get paid per client, you know. What if I don't get any clients? I'm not going to be able to afford rent. I'm not going to be able to afford food. And he said to me, would you rather start something from scratch, which is your own kind of business? Because you kind of open a business when you set up as a yeah. PT. Um, and I said, you know what? True. Because he was, he, was he was like on game. He was saying, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I want to start my own thing. And so he pushed me in that way, to be fair to him. So I'm very grateful to him for that. But, I think when it got put in my head and then there were other people in the sauna at the same time saying, yeah, do it, don't do a nine to five job, try and set up your own business, see where you can go, you're only 21. And I was like, okay, why not? So I started sending my CVs out to like every gym. Luckily, I knew you, kind of. I knew Danielle. Briefly. Yeah, briefly. Yeah. A few Sunday shifts together. <laughs> but um, yeah, I knew Danielle who then kind of, you know, spoke to the manager. I sent my CV through, got the job. And then, yeah, it was kind of just, I wanted to start my own thing, you know? I didn't yeah. want to be someone else's servant. Yeah. I wanted to just do it for myself. I'm only young, you know, I'm only just turned 22. So having that, my own kind of skills that I can put into a business to then help other people, I thought instead of doing it for a bigger brand, brand in terms of the NHS maybe I can do it for myself then I'll be able to provide more for family etc in the future so that was probably the reason why I wanted to do it obviously now I've taken a completely different step and now I do online coaching 
um, which I enjoy even more to be fair yeah. but I think it's just I want to be able to do it for myself I don't want to be told what to do yeah. I'm not good if someone tells me what to it's like when you go when you're about to do the dishes or something at home and then your mum goes you do the dishes and I'm like I'm not doing it anymore yeah. <laughs> you know? to, be, to be honest I, I feel you on that one yeah hence well this whole place yeah yeah I'm still in uni but I don't believe in the education system and you know a salary nine mm. to five I feel like entrepreneurship is it's not for everyone but you the sense of hybrid so you can be in a nine to five but still have your own thing yeah to create some sort of leverage for yourself and eventually leave the nine to five yeah so this is kind of what we're doing here but i understand the frustration that you're talking about because i've got a part-time job he he works a full-time job mm. and we we feel what you feel some people are okay with it and that's fine others are just not i'm i'm one of them people that i don't like being told what to do by somebody that i don't want to be like yeah. But if it's somebody that I look up to, mm. I don't mind being told what to do to get to where he is, taking the advice and kind of just give myself the incentive to just, you know, humble myself. I want to be like this guy, let me take notes. It's okay to learn because you need to learn. It's just, I feel like what it is with the mindset that you have of being wanting to be an entrepreneur is eventually it becomes arrogance mm. in a way because now you don't like being told what to do but in order for you to become somebody you need to learn you need to take yeah. advice yeah, yeah, yeah definitely so that's where i messed up the first time mm. so i was just like nah screw uni <laughs> screw it i don't need it <laughs> but like i didn't look that far ahead because i didn't know nobody My, i didn't have no network i didn't know nobody that's gonna teach me anything but when I started looking, oh, bro, there are people out there that are willing to help you. And I'm, I'm sure you've you felt that way at some point, even, you know, working in your gym, you probably have a mentor right now mm -hmm. that's guiding you through it. Because you can't really do it alone. No, absolutely not. No. So, obviously, in terms of, I was, I was working at the gym probably for, I don't even know how long, I think I've been there, what, four months now? Four or five months, maybe. I think three months into it, I'd scaled up really quickly yeah. in in-person clients, and it was getting to the point where I was being very, in. very tired. I was getting up at five in the morning every day, being at the gym for half five, staying in the gym till ten p.m. with clients and shift, and I was getting to the point where I was just like, "What am I doing?" I said, exactly. "I said to myself." I wanted to be my own boss <laughs> and I didn't want to work a nine to five, but now I'm working <coughs> half five till 10 p.m. It's even worse. <laughs> but that's what people don't understand. Yeah. When you work for yourself, bro, there, there ain't no time limit at when you finish. No, no, no. Because one problem that I found with PT and when I was doing it is, right, you want, you think that you're working on your schedule, but other people have a schedule too. Yeah. And well, you need their money and they need your time. So it's like, you've got to kind of yeah. compromise. You end up just work, doing it when, when they can anyway. Yeah. And you will be doing 16 hour days. Yeah, what you said before as well um, was very poignant to me. You said that, you know, when you start as a PT, you are your own business. That's definitely true. So you can take it from the advantage because obviously I do business. So I'll take from this point. In that case, you pretty much are like your own sole trader. Like you have to put in all the hours yourself. You have to do in all the work yourself. No one else is like, obviously, yeah, you can, you know, hire other people to, you know, help you out and do work if you have that many clients. But at the end of the day, more times than not, especially if you're starting as well, you've got to put all, in all that groundwork yourself. Yeah. All those hours, all that work by yourself. And that's what a lot of people don't really take into account when they first start. I mean, yeah. to be fair, Bilal's made a good point mm -hmm. there. See the podcast. I wouldn't say the podcast is a business, but it's it's a show that we run. Yeah. All of this, honestly, bro, it's a another full time job to to operate to make it function. Is another full time job. Mm -hmm. 
And people don't take that in consideration when they want to say, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to work for myself. They, un they don't understand that working for yourself dedicates more time to work on these things because you're building them from scratch, like you said. Yeah. And you'll be doing like, for example, today I'm up at half four in the morning. Yeah. Right now it's what, like almost 7 p.m. I'm still not done. This is a 14 hour shift, bro. Mm. But people won't be, they won't be willing to do it. So, and that's why I see some people, you know what, nine to five works better for you. Yeah, and yeah. I've, I actually spoke with someone yesterday about this as well. Um, they said to me that, oh, the podcast thing is really fun. I wish I, I wish I could start my own podcast. And then that's when I said to her, like, yo, trust me, like, if, if you say that, you got to realize all the background work that you don't see, which goes into, you know, having this podcast where it's paying for all the equipment that you can see, which, you know, some of the equipment you can't even see on camera um obviously the actual place in which we do record you know editing behind the scenes you know paying for software subscriptions exactly you know doing all the hours of editing unless you want to hire out your own editor but then again there's more money going out your pocket like it's just lots of things where people don't really take into consideration that's why it's very like i can't stress the, like the importance of actually planning something and putting into putting into place the actual right plan before actually you know giving a hundred percent and you know investing some investing your time and money into something you need to know oh this needs to be done and that needs to be done before i can even make this step that's what a lot of people probably fail to realize when they do get into the business in general and to be fair aaron I, I, that's why i want to give you a special shout for that take having the balls to like not going to a nine to five the moment you finish uni, knowing that what you want to do before you even finished and then going ahead with it, knowing that there's no guarantee it'll work, but mm. I'm going to try it anyway. That's something that I will praise you for. And I I would want to say and recommend people try it. Yeah, but 100%. One last question before we move on. Did you have a fear when you started it? Well, the thing is, of yeah, of course, yeah. But the thing that I always say is it's even like getting a mentor and things. You know, it's not cheap. But if you're scared to do something, you kind of know it's the right thing to do because yeah. if you just live in comfortability your whole life, like you're just going to be a number. No, bro. I don't want to be a number. I want to be a name. Do you know what I mean? But like that that's another thing. A lot of people, especially like our age, they'll talk about like... A life balance or having like a balanced lifestyle bro balance doesn't exist, don't exist. if you want to be successful balance does not exist you've got to be waking up early you've got to be so for example i wake up at like maybe five o'clock every day do a load of online work go to the gym do the clients come back home record content edit it do more work and then i'm going to sleep at like 12 11 12 and then same again the next day but yeah. if you want to be successful like a lot of people, they'll just see, I don't know, for example, what's his name? Iman Gadzi. Yeah. You see all these videos of him living the high life and, you know, doing all this, but they don't see when he was 14 years old. Grinding it out. Grinding it in, out. In his room. Yeah. That's what they don't see. They'd be like, yeah, I want to be like Iman Gadzi. But most of the time, they don't have the... The patience. The patience, yeah, the patience for it. Like... Patience is a, it's a lot. Obviously, this comes back to, uh, it ties to Islam. Mm. Obviously, now that you're practicing, you understand the value of patience a lot more. Sabr. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sabr is, it's very, uh, it's encouraged in Islam more than yeah. I think any other religion, mm -hmm. or culture, anything. Like, just in general, there's a praise to it because realistically, bro, the dynamic of time cannot be changed. You, you've got to wait one way or the other. Mm. It's just about the mindset of you willing to, whether you're willing to wait or not. Yeah. Because those that are willing to wait get rewarded 100%. like you did. Yeah, 100%. I think as well, the thing since I started practicing and learning more, I think one thing that's really helped me is just anything that may go wrong, I don't see it as wrong. Yeah. I see it as a test. Yeah. Say, alhamdulillah, move on. Is a test. That's all it is. Yeah. And then the next day, 
something good will happen. And then the next day, maybe something bad will happen. And then maybe it's bad again, maybe it's bad again, and then something good happens. So I feel like it's always a test. And it's always, if you keep working and you keep grinding, you'll eventually get rewarded for it, yeah. you know? Because, Definitely. Because, you know, Allah's the best of planners. He sees hard work, he rewards hard work, you know? So I feel like if I'm lazy, I feel like I'm doing a disservice to God, you know? Yeah. Because you've been given the bot, you've been given this body, and a lot of people just sit around, eat McDonald's all day, won't do anything. And I'm just like, I can't do that. I've got to work hard to do, to be someone, you know? I don't want to be, like I said before, I don't want to be like a number. I don't want to be, so ex example, in like maybe like a nine to five workplace. Say, for example, something really tragic happened, you know, maybe you got hit by a car or something, you died. You get replaced. Next day, right? <laughs> jobs jobs on uh, Indeed, uh, Banfai physiotherapist, there you go. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, bro. But I like, if I died, obviously, no wood anywhere, but. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's too easy. That's too easy. I no. know. It is. <laughs> no, you. No. no, it's a serious topic. No, no you dare go there. I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> go on, anyways. But, like, um, what was I saying then? I lost my track of thought. If you passed away on a. Yeah, trip. my business is gone. No one can receive that service anymore. If that makes sense. So it's, like, valuable. Yeah. You know, instead of just. Oh, obviously, you as a human as well, when you develop yourself and you become wiser, more knowledgeable, stronger, your presence is sensed. Mm. When when something like that is taken away from people, people feel it more. Mm. It's like anyone with certain value, not to say that all humans are not valuable, but you get the gist here. Yeah. Especially as a man, your values and what you can provide to the world and to be honest, that's what the, the paying system, when you get paid the salary system, you tend to get paid more, the more valuable you are, the more you can provide this world. What do you have to offer this world? If you can provide a lot, you'll get paid more. Mm. And it's the same thing. And that's what I get. I get what you're trying to say here. But yeah, anything you want to add on in this segment before? Nah, it's all good, man. Nah. Guys, we're dropping you some valuable content here man <laughs> make sure you like the video guys so yeah right getting into the nitty gritty of getting into shape and all of that mm. so in 2024 it's an opportunity of course it's a brand new year new year's resolution is some people will be struggling around this time it's hitting the tenth. give it another week so well, lock, 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 lock the gyms will be empty again, yeah right? so we're trying to undo that yeah even though it's annoying in the gym having to share equipment <laughs> But yeah, when we said about struggles that you yeah. faced when it came to, you know, coming into the gym, taking care of your diet and then losing 30 kg in like three, four months. What sort of tips would you give now that you've made those mistakes for for the people to, to take in consideration in terms of diet? So in terms of diet, I think that's probably the scariest part because you can so easily have a fear, almost have a really big phobia of food, whatever food it is, whether it's, you know, tuna pasta, a pasty, chocolate, all that kind of stuff, you won't eat food. That's kind of what I did. That's why I lost so much weight in a short period of time. But the way to do it, you have to gradually decrease your calories. So obviously the way you do it is you can go on like a calorie calculator to kind of figure out how your how, mu how many calories you need for your body just to operate in general. Stay the same way. If you just stayed still, doing nothing, figure out how much energy your body needs in terms of food. But after that, you kind of need to maybe decrease your calories maybe by 200. So whether that's doing, maybe decreasing 200 calories from your food intake or is it doing burning 200 calories doing cardio is it doing an extra weight session a week but you need it's a gradual process and then through that you need to make sure that you're having a high level of protein a high intake of protein as well because it's all going to go losing weight but if you just lose the weight and you just go on a treadmill for two hours every day or an hour you're going to lose weight but you're not really going to see any gradual change yeah because you're going to lose weight but your body's going to stay the exact same so in terms to try and, you know, 
recompose your body, so to say, if you do weights, if you do cardio, if you decrease your calories and go into a calorie deficit, obviously with a high uh, protein intake, you're going to lose body fat and you're going to be able to, you know, start to see some really good changes as well. But the food is the most important part. Yeah. That's what I would say. That's what I noticed. When I started taking my food seriously and realizing what I'm putting into my body, that's where I saw the best change. Yeah. Coffee helps as well. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee, man. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, and I've experienced that myself, and he has too. Yeah, I mean, if you've seen him before as well, transitions FC here. Yeah, <laughs> but um, trust me, I want to have. I've got a question specifically on cravings. Right, you've suffered from this when you try and follow a diet, and I do as well. Oh, okay. Cravings. How do you satisfy your cravings? By the way, um, my uh, my delivery receipts this month. Let's not talk about it, <laughs> bro. He, he's mad, you know. I swear to you, I'm not even gonna expose him because he's exposed himself. Bro. Uh, so in terms of cravings, you know, I'm a I'm a killer for you know Biscoff. Yeah. Biscoff. There's one thing they have in Sainsbury's, and it's it's white chocolate with Biscoff biscuits and like Biscoff spread underneath the biscuit. Yeah. And I'm a killer for that. So to kill my cravings, what I'll have is I'll have my porridge. I'll have protein porridge. Yeah. And then I'll put, you know, this isn't even answering the question. I'm just kind of telling you. I don't know if you're interested or not. But <laughs> basically, <laughs> put, the, put the porridge in. We'll see if it makes the final edit. <laughs> Put the porridge in and then obviously put in the, the biscuits on top and then melt in some Biscoff spread. That helps me with my cravings because yeah. that's what I crave. But say, for example, with my clients, they'll have one day a week or one day every two weeks where they will have an off-plan meal. So that means they can literally eat whatever they... Obviously, not the whole day because if you eat chocolate cake the whole day, you're not yeah, you're just going to set you back. But... If you just have maybe one meal or a dessert, for example, there can be anything, you know, a burgers, Archie's, whatever you, whatever you fancy. Um, that usually helps because what I tell people is they, when clients have came to me, they've been like, I'm re- going to be really strict with my diet. Like, I just want to eat this. I just want to eat that or chicken, rice and broccoli for, you know, six months. I'm just like, right, it's not going to work because eventually you're going to start craving stuff. You're not going to have any sugar in your diet. You're going to crave that. You're not going to have, you know, you'll cut down on your carbs. You're going to start craving them. Um, so that's what I do usually. But say, for example, if they really, really, really want to have a dessert every night, there's ways to, you know, add that into their diet plan. So say, for example, you might just have to borrow calories from maybe your breakfast. Maybe you just skip breakfast maybe have a coffee, go work, and then you can have dessert later on. Yeah. And it'll still work. So it's all about calories in, calories out, protein intake. So as long as your calories coming in are less than the calories going out and you're eating high protein, you're still going to see results. Yeah, you just got to make sure you're not just eating rubbish all day, you know? Yeah, It's got to be decent, nutritious food, uh, which is kind of what I kind of teach my clients. Um, pretty much, yeah. But... One way to help with cravings as well. Coffee, chewing gum, or brushing your teeth straight after you've eaten. You tried it? Yeah. Do you it's, it's not pleasant. I mean, to be <laughs> honest, bro, I'm, I don't eat breakfast. Oh, so nah, neither do the I. The way, obviously, I'd, whether it's healthy or not, it's up to debate. It works for me, right? Yeah. I intermittent fast, and I drink a lot of coffee. Obviously, nicotine, snus. It helps. <laughs> it, it helps in it. Like yeah. I find my 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 desire for food and just like my hunger in general is low, mm-hmm. so I end up eating like one or, one or two meals a day, typically around this time. So around five till about eight ish, mm. three four hour window. But I'd eat a very very protein dense meal, mm. and that's what just works for me. And your cake meal. I'm so glad I have the mic. I'm so glad I have the mic. <laughs> I'm so glad. 
Um, you touched on. Um, I wanted to actually actually ask a question about something you just said. The brushing your teeth after having a meal. What's the purpose of that in terms of like, like towards diet? So, so I right, so obviously after you br- after you eat and you brush your teeth or you have a chewy. I don't know the science behind it, but it's like a appetite suppressor. So if you have cravings afterwards and you brush your teeth, I don't know what it is, just you don't want to eat. I don't know what it is at all, but it's when you get that like minty taste. It's like when you brush your teeth just before you go to bed, you don't you're not gonna eat anything after that really, <laughs> are you? Try me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, it don't taste nice, but try me. <laughs> nah, to be honest, I get what you mean. Yeah. Um, coffee coffee does it for me, bro. Yeah, bro. I go off three three coffees in the morning, man. Yeah, when I was cutting, when I was shredding weight, I was having like nine coffees a day. Bro, okay. Like, <laughs> okay. Go on, bro. Sorry. No, that that, that like, was it, bro. Go on. Coffee, bro, is the best thing this world has to offer. When it when you want to be a workaholic, yeah, that works, bro. That is the like, drink that oh. <laughs> God has given <laughs> for entrepreneurs, bro. Bro, <laughs> I think I woke up at R four, right? I've must have had about five coffees to from R four to. 10 11 i smashed serious work <laughs> serious work bro that it works man caffeine is the best it is man it makes you work, do you know what's bro? crazy i'm gonna this is a confession by the way i've never actually had hot coffee before oh, bro drink it iced if you want I've, and i've only ever tried iced coffee once no not not from, no 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 don't get twisted don't be going to like Starbucks and obviously. No, 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 no. It was from anywhere. um, yeah. it's from a supermarket. I don't think no, it's from Tesco. Don't be going to no coffee shops and getting coffee. The way you do it, it's pure black coffee or a slight bit of, of milk in it. Just a slight. Slight, just okay. gives it because it, it's not the nicest when it's black in it. I'll be honest. Nah, I like it, you know. Out of context, you know, never mind. Yeah, the, 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 well, someone's got a clip down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Nah, but it's like, um, I don't know what it is. It's like a double, if you have a double espresso on an empty stomach. <laughs> yeah, mate, you might go to the toilet, you know, you might be spending a bit of time on the toilet, but a bit. What, what it does, what it does for your brain when you're working and say you get a little, maybe not brain fog, but if you're getting a little bit tired and maybe for example with me, when I'm on my laptop and I'm getting a bit tired, just DMing and, you know, replying and posting and editing. If I have a double espresso, it's like flying. It's like I've got wings. <laughs> flying. It's genuinely like I've got wings. But it's even it's like any I try and stay away from energy drinks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the monster is. When it, when the monster I is. Try. See your favour. See your <laughs> No, I try, but obviously sometimes it just helps. Yeah. Like because I don't like eating, so the way I see food is if this is gonna sound, this is gonna sound crazy, but obviously back in the day, you know, when you wanted to eat food, you had to go out, hunt, kill an animal, yeah. and then you'd cook it, you know? Yeah. But like that hunger, that hunger makes you work to get your food. So the way I see it is when I'm hungry, I put that into doing my work online yeah. or doing my clients and then after I've, you know, done something maybe successful or I've got a new client on board or whatever, then I'll have my food as a reward. Yeah. And then also another thing I tell my clients is I give that same, like, an- an- analogy? Analogy? Analogy. Analogy? analogy? Yeah. yeah. Anal- yeah. yeah. Is that right? Dictionary. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So same analogy of snacking in the day. Yeah. So I always say, so you know when these people used to go out and hunt food and kill the animals to then eat, do you think they stopped off at the supermarket to grab a oh, quick? No, bro, the, the man were chasing few. rabbits down the river, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't know. They could have little them days. You never know. <laughs> but it's even like I say to them, the the analogy I give to, give to them is, if you're chasing an animal to kill to eat yeah. food, your meal, are you gonna stop off and have some grass on the way, or are you just gonna keep going and working till you get? <laughs> 
<laughs> until you get your your main meal, you know? Yeah, that's all right. But obviously, that doesn't work for everyone. It works for some people, not everyone. That's only a few clients it works for, but that's the best way I can See, describe it. I, I believe that breakfast is a first world problem. Social construct. Yeah, like it, it never really... I've never been the type to, to eat breakfast, even when I was younger. I feel like it's a fallacy that we put in our minds. Bro. Because I swear there was a... I don't know where I've seen it, but I swear it was like Kellogg's or something. And they made cornflakes or something like that. And they said to people to have it in the morning because it's good for you. Yeah. But obviously we know now cereal's got all these added sugars and yeah. whatever. So that can actually be something that if you're feeling fatigued, like maybe one, two o'clock in the afternoon, it's probably because you've had some kind of cereal or breakfast. So... For example, one, two o'clock, if I just have a coffee, or two or three or four, I'm flying. I don't need no breakfast in the morning. But the thing is as well, coming back to like Islam a little bit, so obviously when we're fasting, we could maybe have, fasting all day, have three dates out before. I won't need any more food. Yeah. Obviously I will have something. But you kind of recognise you don't actually have that need for food. It's all kind of just up here. Yeah. And if you fix this, this problem will go. You'll lose the belly. To start like achieving your fitness goals if you just kind of have that impulse control, yeah, which obviously is very important, especially as a man, you need to have impulse control. It's just everything will come with that, you know, it could be anything instant gratification as well. That a lot of yeah. that happens as well, you know, with everything it could be like what you're viewing on the internet, your food, whether you actually go to the gym, do your cardio, uh, do your homework, those kind of things, you know, or am I going to scroll on TikTok and yeah. You know, definitely. Do you know going back to Kellogg's? I seen. I think it was a. Was it? I can't remember where. I think you might have. I read it in a book or watched it on a podcast or something. So do you know the idea of breakfast, right? Mm. Do you know how? Um, so back in the seventies, they wanted people stop smoking. Mm. So do you know how they incentivize smoking again? They started advertising women with, with smoking. And that's how you see now women smoke, like normally on a day-to-day lifestyle. It happened to um, sausages. No one was buying sausages. So what they ended up doing was they made an advertisement back in the day because all the advertisements were controlled by specific people. They went up to the advertisement board, paid them a certain amount, whatever it was. I want you guys to incentivize the sausages and beans Heinz beans and stuff make it like a a, a world thing where people are now buying this on a constant mm. where does the uh, the full English come from it comes from that change so now what they started doing was they incentivized sausages and beans and made it as part of a healthy breakfast so it's all a dynamic so what so full English only started in the 70s I think so or like no, no, not in the seven no that was the the, the women smoking. Oh sorry. About that. Yeah, I think it was in the seventies, but before that, the the dynamic of breakfast, that's what the full English. That's how it was made. It was like that. Just to get people consuming to, more. Yeah, consuming it. That's interesting. So it's all about the information that you can give to people, to get them to to make the general shift in society. Mm. So that's how I see, perceive breakfast as. It was like a revolutionized business move to get people yeah. consuming more products. Mm. That's why you see Kellogg's yeah. and cereal. Because who, why should cereal actually be consumed for breakfast? Why is it a breakfast food? Yeah, but it's even, I remember when I used to have breakfast as a kid in like high school, my mum would make it for me. Yeah. Put it on a table. I wouldn't even want to eat it. But it's like, your cereal's ready. It's your like, breakfast is ready. I'm like, I don't, I don't even want it. Obviously, I still ate it. Yeah. But it's, I don't know. It's just I'm telling you, you, you never had no Turkish breakfast? Of course, of course. <laughs> 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 no, of course, innit? But obviously, before school, I was getting up late. My mum would wake me up like an hour before. And I'd stay in bed for an extra like forty minutes. Got twenty minutes to get ready. There's no <laughs> time for Turkish breakfast. It takes at least an hour yeah, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> to eat all that. But right. um, 
but yeah, you know yeah, I feel you, man. The, the back home food just hits different. Yeah, it's even it's even when I go back home, and my nan's been up since I don't know what time cooking. Yeah, and I don't even like breakfast. But obviously, in Turkey, it's a big thing. Yeah, so I wake up because I'm on in holiday mode anyway. I feel tired already. Yeah. Like in here, getting up at like five o'clock in the morning is no. not really any struggle yeah. to me. It doesn't. I'm just used to it now but over there getting up at nine o'clock it seems tough is difficult and then i'm up and then i'm eating all that food and then when when my plate is finished my nan just goes right there you go more more <laughs> more, more bread more eggs more everything <laughs> and then I'm, after that I'm like, i need to go for another sleep i've just woken up an hour ago <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the thing man yeah it's mad but genuine question Obviously, you've got you've experienced this. I've experienced this. Mm. A lot of experienced this. But I want your opinion. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest killer for gains? Biggest killer for gains. Yeah, obviously, there's there's the different parameters of why this is the case. Do you mean in terms of diet, or do you mean training, or? Let's keep it to diet, since this is diet, the, we're yeah. reaching the end of the diet bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it is? I think it's for people f who want to lose body fat, it's oil. Yeah. It's oil. Because obviously in those cultural foods, you know, <laughs> in Turkey there's obviously köfte, kebabs, you know, obviously biryani, all that stuff. You've got your ghee in there as well. That's definitely the biggest thing. But obviously yeah. with the way I do it is for my online coach and in person to be fair, but more so for online, my clients will get a cookbook, like a halal diet program, or it's like a catalogue of breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. And they'll get all them same meals, köfte, kebab, biryani, samosas, all that jazz, you know. But the only difference is there'll be slightly different ingredients, but they all taste exactly the same. Yeah. So it might just be like the amount of oil that you put in, or like substitutes for like ghee, all things like that, you can still eat the same food. You just yeah. got to change little bits, but it's definitely oil. Because I know man, that my dad, he used to do it, and I told him to stop. When he was cooking, olive oil, obviously it's like what this big. Yeah. The guy would put like half. <laughs> <laughs> That's like how many calories? Twenty thousand at least. Yeah, some Yo, some, crazy. some relatives from back home that I know, like not even just relatives, like. Like some of like my mum's friends' houses that I've been to, and oh, actually, I don't know if I should say that. But some people <laughs> I know, uh, because I know my mum watches this. But some people, yeah, that I know, they they will make a meal and they will have seventy five thousand liters of cooking oil in one meal, and it's just like, yo, this is why there's so much like heart problems in like my community, especially. It's just like there's just so much, and it's overdoing it. And it's really like it, it doesn't need to be that much because no. that's what's really killing a lot of people in you know in my culture anyway yeah. no, 100 percent. i think as well they like my dad even put used to put like olive oil on like salad and i would say <laughs> i i would say to him I'd be like, dad i can't lie it tastes banging it does taste banging but you don't need it like <laughs> just <laughs> sprinkle some lemon or sumac on it or something you, make, you can make it taste nice without the oil yeah but, but when people because i don't think people understand that obviously olive oil especially is good it is good for you it's a healthy fat yeah, yeah. but if you're having as i said like half a bloody thing it's good in moderation yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly but it's just, a lot of it's just again. It, it kills it because i remember when i was in uni when I was trying to bulk, when I didn't need to bulk, because I was already like 40% body fat or something stupid, um, I'd put, I'd make a shake, and I'd put everything in it that I needed to, oats, meal, <laughs> protein powder, raw eggs, I thought I was like Rocky Balboa or something, and then oh, I'd put like, <laughs> I'd put like a load of olive oil in it as well. Oh, did that even taste? No, 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 it's nasty, it's horrible. I bet that just, the texture of that must be crazy. Yeah, man. Like, that just, you know, reverse cards that as well, <laughs> man. You go all the nice stuff in there and then you 
And then you just top it off with a bit of olive oil. You yeah, know that's what I mean? A bit mad, man. Nah, it didn't but taste yeah. good. Anything else you want to add on? No, Hello? No, good. Nah, no, no good for me. Right, guys, just to summarize. So, tips for your diet craving satisfaction, coffee helps, toothpaste, Chewies. chewing gum. <laughs> this helps your. What was it? It, it reduces your it's just uh, appetite suppression yeah. yeah it reduces your appetite guys so managing you know your calorie intake that could help you out guys um, staying consistent self explanatory really you've just mm. got to do it there's no other way to be consistent or have a coach <laughs> <laughs> yeah. guys if you're interested in his coaching <laughs> I'll leave his link in the bio so yeah are you sure you're gonna do that? Are you gonna, you know? No, listen? I've actually I know. no, no, I've actually. Oh, okay. I've sorted, I've sorted that out actually. Oh, okay. No, I was, I was just making sure because I know like your thing and like his thing is like it could be, you know, it could well, be like. Oh, oh no, nah, bro! I couldn't give a. Uh, I don't want to be. A oh, coach okay. Just making sure. Just making sure. <laughs> to, to be honest, whoever wants me as a coach, sure, but I don't. I wouldn't. I don't say I'm a coach. I'm just there, in it. Just there. <laughs> just there. <bro. laughs> just there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe some that um, it might be something to get into after uni maybe but at the moment I've got my plate full man mm. I can't see what you did there uh, <laughs> <more> time <laughs> um, tracking tips so calorie calculators uh, what's the app called obviously man? you can use my, my fitness, fitness pal. pal yeah and then there's also a scale I can't remember the scale that it is but someone in the gym showed me it's an electronic scale and yeah. you put whatever you want on it it's got an app as well yeah you you write down on the app what it is then you put it on the on scale, the scale. Yeah. it comes up with literally everything calories included yeah so say That's if you true. said like chicken breast yeah. you just put chicken breast on the app you put it on the scale weighs it tells you exactly how much protein exactly how much fat whatever that's, that's a really good it's only like 20 pounds as well it's not too bad see innovation man yeah. how does he think of that <laughs> Um, again so biggest game killers guys stay away from olive oil excessive amounts anyway yeah and snacking I would say personally yeah um, moving on so training obviously there's different dynamics of training I've always been a firm believer that weight training is the best form of training 100%. just to get a, a good good body shape and just to stay healthy with improvement in metabolism Mm -hmm. because a lot of people struggle from metabolism weight training helps with that yeah Yeah. big time but what would you say people go wrong with their training judging from your clients maybe from their past experiences maybe your past experience Mm. what do you say so a lot of times when people train they don't actually understand obviously they're not supposed to it's not their job yeah they don't actually understand, you know, the mechanics of the body. So, in terms of, so say if you're doing a bench press, and you're pushing through like this, you're going really quick like this. You think you're pushing loads of weight. Yeah. Say if you've got like eighty kg on there, and you're just pushing it and pushing it. Whereas the guy who's maybe got fifty kg on the bar, is going like this, and he's coming down really, really, really slowly. He's pausing, then he's pushing up. Yeah. He's probably getting more out of that than you are, even if you're pushing more weight. You probably can't you can't control it. Yeah. So I think one aspect that I even I've only recently started doing properly, because you know, ego takes over sometimes and you know, yeah. you just wanna lift heavy weight. But um obviously right now I'm trying to focus on like my eccentrics and my negative portion yeah. of the movement. So just for those that don't know, the negative movement is so obviously you push up and it's this part when you're coming down. So you want to kind of, I take probably a long time. You only really need three seconds. I take about four or five seconds doing it. Yeah. Just because that's how I feel the muscle contract a little bit more. Uh, and I've noticed, to be fair, my strength's gone up. Um, the way that, you know, I control everything. My body feels better. My joints aren't hurting. Uh, obviously, that comes down to other things as well. But that's definitely one thing I would say. I would say training splits as well. So a lot of people... They won't really know what split to do. There's loads of different studies out there that show l- different, different you know, splits work. Yeah. Whether that's push pull legs, Arnold split, bro split. Even there was recent studies that showed because sometimes when someone says they do the bro split, which is you know Monday chest, Tuesday back, Wednesday arms, 
whatever, they'd be like, oh, that doesn't work. But if you actually train that to a very, very high intensity, there's studies out there that show it's one of the best ones, if not the best one. Uh, that's a common misconception that people do have as well. So, but the difference is people don't know when they're training hard. hard. Yeah. So they could be doing, you know, they might push really, really hard and then they stop and they're like, oh, I'm done. But realistically, they probably could have got another five. Yeah. But the reps might take 10, 20 seconds to get up. And that's why they don't grow because they don't realize that they can push so much more, yeah. which again, which is really good for having, you know, even a, not even a coach, but like a training partner to go with like one of your mates. So I found, you know, when I was doing like dumbbell press and I was going with my flatmate, if I went on my own, I'd struggle to get like 44s up, yeah. just the initial kick up. And then with him, I was able to get like 46s up yeah. just because he was there supporting me, giving that stability. Um, so that's another really good tip as well. Um, but obviously, if you can't go with someone, if you're on your own, get a trainer. Play. Get a trainer. Get a trainer. <laughs> but, uh, just, sorry, I was gonna say, or just ask someone to spot you. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So some people just are scared to do that. Yeah. Some people ain't got the. Like, I remember when I started, bro. I, I was confident going up to some massive guy and telling him, "Yo." <laughs> Spot me, G. But the thing is, as well, you know, the biggest guys in the gym are, are the always nicest. the nicest, the nicest ones. 100%, yeah. It's always like yeah. the ones that look like they're on, they've been on juice for 10 years, or like Ronnie Coleman's twin, that are the nicest, most down to earth, soft people you'll ever meet in your life. Even though they look scary when they're lifting weight or they're making large yeah. grunts. They're so honestly, nice. especially in the gym I'm at, they're very, very nice. But there's just other people in the gym that just give you attitude for no reason. Yo, trust me, bro. Trust me. <laughs> Some disrespectful <laughs> people in the gym, man. Honestly, I, I, get, I get it. <laughs> no, but is there anything you want to add on, Bilal? No, 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 I'm good. Yeah. So obviously, you just discussed the different types of training systems. Obviously, mm. repeats, we. We're familiar with what they are. Mm. Obviously, there's different styles of tr training systems. What do you think? If you had to use one training system for the rest of your life, what would it be? Think carefully here. For the rest of my life? Yeah. If I was training until I was like 80? Yeah. If bro you... split. Serious? No. Push, pull, legs. Probably push, pull, legs. You can't go wrong with it. You can't go wrong with it, but as I say, like the only reason I said bro split was because when I get to like 50, 60, I'm expecting my body to be in pieces. Yeah, you, you won't be able to go five, six times a week. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, true, actually, just three times a week push. Oh, yeah, push I see what you. Push. Yeah, I see. That. Yeah, probably push pull legs. Maybe add a bit of circuit training yeah. in there as well. It just gets the job done, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah it gets the job done. It does it. It does it. It does everything, you know, that you need. But obviously, this is where, you know, education comes in because obviously there's some times where say for example if you come in on the day and you're still hurting from the last session that just shows that you haven't recovered properly yeah you haven't done everything that you could do to recover whether that's hydration nutrition sleep recovery you know whether that's you know different things like heat therapy there's loads of different forms of recovery but if you're going to go in and do the exact same thing what do you think is going to happen you're not gonna be able to progress. You're gonna hit a plateau. You're gonna hit a plateau, and then that's where demotivation comes in, and then eventually you just fall off, and then you, yeah. you're back to square one. That's where a lot of people do go wrong because they think like, "Oh, I'm gonna see X amount of results in six weeks," which is possible. But a lot of these things that you see, like these four week challenges, they don't work. Bro. They don't work because they decrease your calories to about a thousand, exactly. and then when you see the results, and then you jump off it, and then they say, "Oh, you can start eating again properly now." Yeah. Then you put all the weight back on, exactly. and then they do another one, and then they just take your money again. Exactly. Which is, you know, why you need, if you're going to get education, you need to go with someone that is actually there, that actually cares about your results, not yeah. just someone who's looking for a quick bag. Yeah. To be fair, bro, what what a lot of you guys fail to understand is, like, your body takes about 8 to 12 weeks to, to reach equilibrium. Like, you need to focus and stick to this, whatever you're following, whatever program it is, whatever diet plan it is, you need to focus and stay to it for about eight to 12 weeks for your, bo for your body to adapt to it. A lot of people fail to, to realize that mm. 
they'll bring like three, four weeks in. I'm just like, oh, what the hell? Or nothing's changed. Or, or something's changed, but it's not major. But everyone's got this like, or oh, instant gratification. Oh, yeah. You know? It's like come back to impulse control as well yeah. before. It's like the exact same thing. If you see chocolate there or something that you really like, you've got to have that, you know, mind control where you're like, yeah, it would be nice to eat it, but I don't need it. You don't. No. It's all in here, bro. Yeah. And another thing people fail to realise it, honestly, a good foundation and a good body takes a good four or five years to build. If natural. If natural. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I started, bro, I started training. I started training at 16. Yeah. I only started looking wham, mm. big, at like 20, 21. That's when it started looking decent. Mm. Now, at 22, it looks, obviously, I've got a frame. Could, could it improve? 100%. Mm. But the frame and the initial size and, I just, it just looks good. Yeah. But it took me that long to do, mm. natural. And yeah, people yeah. don't realise how long it takes. Everyone wants it so quick, so. Yeah, but it's like everything now. It's not just even about transforming your body or you can even talk about transforming how your brain operates. It's when you're on your phone, and this is 99% of the population. Yeah. The instant grat- or not even, I don't even know how to explain it, but it's like when you're scrolling on TikTok. You're indulging. And you see something and you're like, right, I'll swipe, swipe. Or you catch something for a bit, oh, it's a bit too long, right, swipe, swipe, swipe. It's, it's the same yeah. kind of principle. Yeah. Where it's like, if something is too long to wait for to get the end result, yeah. I'll just won't watch it. I'll, I'll search a, a short on YouTube yeah. to watch instead. Which is, is a shame, really, because people are so much more capable of achieving great things than they think they're capable of. Yeah. But I think that's just a big factor down to, you know, the world we live in today because it's all dopamine receptors of naff out the window with everything, you know, it's content that you're viewing on the internet. Yeah. Whether that's X rated or it's even just sub X rated. It's just you know, it's and it's like the after that like every single time yeah. like gratification, instant gratification and then after they've watched something, it's like that. Ah. Right, <laughs> and they find oh, something more. Yeah, but they find and go on and find something else to watch. And they know in their brain they shouldn't be doing it, but they still do it. Yeah, and then they feel guilty afterwards. And but just, they still go back and do it. I don't understand. Do you get what I, mean? I don't understand. But, it. but it's like it is more like nicotine, bro. The more you have of it, the more you get addicted. Yeah, yeah. The harder to undo. Mm. It's literally like that, but the, at the scale of how bad it is. Bro, they don't understand how much a phone can deter you from what you need to do. Even when it comes to body changes and, and making transformations and setting diets mm. and ac- accomplishing real life stuff. Yeah. People are underestimating their capabilities and overestimating their the phone. It's yeah. like, yo, the phone is more valuable than anything. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, and it's like, yo, the moment that phone dies. What am I it's gonna useless. do? Useless. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's even like that's what I try and do with my coaching as well though. So when I do like weekly check ins, like they fill out a sheet, it'll be basically asking them, Have you viewed X rated content yeah. this week? How many times have you viewed it? Or it'll be because I basically I get them to read like self improvement stuff. I get I get them all on self improvement, not viewing stuff that they don't need to, stuff that's basically just going to improve them. Yeah. And to be fair, I've noticed a massive difference in it. Like, if someone is keeping you, like, accountable, even if you just do it with a friend, yeah. if you do a challenge with a friend, to be like, right, I'm going to read, let's read a book, whoever reads the most amount of pages, whoever learns the most, I don't know, gets X reward. Yeah. Competition. Yeah. Competition is a very, very good thing, and especially is and ca- accountability as well. But I just feel like everyone wants things so easily. Yeah. To, to be fair, reach up, up on that. Sorry, bro. Um, people want the privilege and the power without the responsibility. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when it comes to diet, p- 
people want to eat like ass and look good it's like it don't work bro <laughs> it don't work but sorry bro go on no uh, i was just gonna ask a question um what's sort of like the difference that you've seen from people who have partaken in that and where they've given up watching that type of content and if so what you know has there been any glaring differences that you yourself have observed from that yeah to be fair it's even um for example there's this one client he came to me and he was very overweight he works in like a i think it's proper like a property office something i don't know what he can't remember what he sells sells something and he said to me he was like when he's in work he doesn't feel confident so when he's on calls he stutters yeah. doesn't feel assured of himself okay. and all that kind of jazz and obviously he's done really well he's got a really good transformation in his body but even throughout the weeks and the months that i was coaching him when we jump on a call maybe like once every two three weeks i could tell he was like looking at the camera it sounds funny but when we first started he was to say if that's the camera he was he'd speak like this he'd be yeah yeah yeah, it's kind like, of like, like looking around, like on. fiddling. Yeah. But towards the end of the coaching, he was like looking at me like this, speaking really, really well. Yeah. And just was really assured of himself. And to be fair to him, he even that confidence allowed him to work harder, got more deals through the door, and eventually got a promotion. See you guys. Alhamdulillah. So. Inshallah. See, that's the difference it can make. But people don't realize fitness for a man, especially, is the fundamental like center stone for success in life i agree like if you walk into a job interview or you walk in to do a sales pitch or something and you walk in say there's two people there's person a and person b both walk in in a white shirt black trousers black shoes same outfit one person person a is in very good shape shoulders back chin up very assured of himself or person b overweight his shirt doesn't fit very well his buttons like coming undone pants are too tight like his zip you can see it yeah. who are you going to respect more like the person b is probably going to be they don't even respect themselves yeah exactly but i feel like physical shape shows to someone like you if someone's in physical shape and you shake their hand you're up, you know, automatically like okay this person like he don't mess around he knows what he's doing he takes care of himself whereas yeah, person yeah. B you, you can kind of get a sense of disorganisation so, lack of self-discipline yeah no control over their well food never mind their life do you know what I mean yeah and we said this on a previous podcast and people were thought of being harsh but it, that's the reality of it as of being a man like yo you ain't got it easy out here being out of shape puts you at a substantial disadvantage. No one actually understands it until, you know, it's somebody close to you that's reversing it. Mm. He is staying in shape. He is going out there working hard. He is doing the extra, going the extra mile. And now he's rewarding of it. it yeah. And people don't realise it until it hits home. Yeah. But sometimes when, when it hits home, it's too late. Yeah. When exactly. you're 40 and you've wasted your youth years and like your prime years, 20s and 30s, being out of shape, not working hard, and now you've got a responsibility of family. Yeah, exactly. It's not easy to just undo everything. Yeah, exactly. It's like this is the, well, I say this like everyone's 22, but when you're this age in your 20s, that's got to be the time where, you know, you're focusing on, you know, obviously you dean, but you're focusing on your fitness you know, business and finance and then obviously relationships and family. Yeah. But if you can just improve your fitness and get in a bit of bit better shape, yeah. you'll significantly notice the difference in the way people talk to you, in the way you talk to people, the way you hold yourself. But it's even like when you're older, you still have a chance. Regarding yeah. you're not like sixty. I mean, even at 60, maybe you can turn it around well, somehow. It's, it's, but it's difficult. Yeah. It's the, the, it's the, the probability is low. Yeah. But say if you're like 40, so say for example, there's this client I have and he came to me and he said, I get out of breath when I play with my son. 
yeah. when he plays football. So he goes to the park with his son and he plays football and he gets out of breath, so he has to stop. And I said, I just said to him, how much of a priority is this for you? And he said, really, really, really high. Like, imagine not being able to play with your kid because you're that out of breath yeah. and you're that unfit. Like, I just can't imagine a world where it that gets, could ever happen yeah, to me. It gets to that point. Like, I would play with my son all day one day. You know, inshallah, I can have a boy, but... Inshallah. You know what I mean? It yeah. just doesn't fathom. Yeah, but, but like, that's the thing. People don't... Under, they don't realise that little things like that... Well, it's not even little. It's a major thing. But things like that, it, it stops you from living a normal life, bro. Imagine mm. being overweight to the point where you've got to find special clothes to fit you. Yeah. You, I, you ain't got the privilege. Crazy. Because I, I, I say it is a privilege. Being in good shape is a privilege. Because mm. we live in a world now where... It's very rare mm. to be in good shape. And also, I was going to add as well, when you do... So, obviously, the guy we were talking about, he was 40 years old. A lot of the time, like you said before, the probability of you getting into shape properly from then decreases yeah. by that time. That's why it's that's why we say it's more important to start in your 20s, yeah. start mm -hmm. as soon as you can, um, to just get into better shape. Definitely agree with you, 100 but is there anything that you want to add on before we wrap this podcast up? Because honestly, bro, it's been a pleasure. You've yeah. put some fantastic points in there. No, I appreciate that. Bilal, anything you want to add? Honestly, no, I, ju I, ju I just wanted to grab the mic for a second. I think this is the best episode that we've recorded, personally. Probably. So, thank really? You. Yeah, Probably. Nah, I appreciate 100. that, bro. 100. It's, it's been fantastic, thank man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate well, that. Um, guys. That's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, guys. We're trying to make more content like this. Obviously, varieties. It's not always going to be about fitness. But today, Aaron's done us a solid. Thank you very much for coming on. Below, anything you want to add on? Um, no, not really. I just want to just tell people that we're going to put all of uh, Aaron's socials uh, in the description. Um, so, yeah, just make sure you go check him out. Um, if you are, you know, trying to get into the things that he was talking about, getting into shape. So yeah, all of his details will be in the description. Appreciate that. Thank you Guys, much. it's been the Incompatibles. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us on all social medias. Like Bilal said, check out Aaron. All his, the, all his social media links are in the bio. Especially the coaching. I'll leave a lead. Specific, is there like a, do you have a website or a specific area that they can contact you straight away to be fair regards coaching yeah to be fair in my instagram i've got a link in my bio which will just send you to a quick two minute form you can fill out and then you can book in a call with me from there regarding so it has to be 24 hours in advance at least perfect guys it's been the incompatibles your boy moad your boy moad <laughs> <Your boy, laughs> <Moad. laughs> <laughs> it's been a long episode been a yo long episode. i need a piss bro that's so, why yeah, i need a piss <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Been like this for about right, let's wrap it up let's wrap it up guys it's been your boy Moad <laughs> below Aaron and take care we'll see you guys in the next episode